Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Respectable viewers and listeners, welcome back after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We also learn of verses in the 22nd Jews where Allah Azza wa Jal, He is directly addressing the believers uh, and teaching and educating them with regards to the importance of observing the most profound respect and reverence towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even in terms of entering and remaining in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam unnecessarily Allah Azza wa Jal says that La tadkhulu, O believers La tadkhulu buyutan nabiyya illa an yu'dhana lakum that do not enter the uh, rooms, the blessed rooms, the houses of the Prophet as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had divided his house up into rooms where our mothers, the wives of the Prophet وسلم, would reside. And there was an occasion when some companions, they remained even after com completing their meal. Allah Azza wa says, La tudkhulu. So he takes it upon himself. He doesn't say that to the Prophet that you teach them, but this becomes divine law. Once again, establishing the importance the Prophet has in the divine perspective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the divine view of Allah azza wa jal that do not enter the homes of the uh, communicator of hidden of hidden news buyut and nabi as the word nabi means one who has uh, information one who gives and provides who imparts to you information of the concealed news of hidden news this is what the meaning of nabi is that Al-Mukhbiru anil ghaybi awil mustaqbili bi ilhami min Allah Ta'ala One who is a mukhbir, one who gives information of ghayb, of that which is hidden or of the future with ilham from Allah Azza wa Jal as Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed him with that information, with that knowledge as he has bestowed that to him. So do not enter the homes, the rooms of the Nabi. Illa an yu'adhana lakum Except that you have been given permission to do that. Also, there is the verse in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Which once again is a bouquet of the greatness, the magnificence and the excellences bestowed to our nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam which we should accept from the depth of our hearts such as the uh, earlier ones that I mentioned uh, previously uh, prior to the break that Shahid, Mubashir, Navira, Da'i ilallah, Sirajam, Munira. That these are excellencies which have been bestowed to our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which are unique to him. And some of these have, you know, the previous prophets of Allah were not given these qualities that he has. They were given miracles, but our Nabi collectively has all the miracles that were previously uh, bestowed to the other prophets and far greater so in miracles in knowledge in uh, his status he uh, surpasses all the previous prophets so in this verse Allah says that surely Allah and his angels meaning the entire angels so Allah begins the verse with himself undoubtedly Allah and his angels they send blessings salat ala nabi and this is how Allah sends it, how the Malaika send it, and how we say it, it is all different. And Allah, He showers His mercy upon the Prophet ﷺ and praises Him in the presence of angels. So, Ya Yuladina Amanu, O believers, you should also take part in this. Allah instructs them that join me in this action sallu alayhi send salat upon him wa sallimu taslima and send salam upon him befittingly meaning with a worthy salutation so this verse it is an ocean of the excellences of our nabi sallallahu alayhi wa as other prophets were blessed with 
some superiorities, but perhaps on one occasion. When Sayyiduna Adam, for example, Allah Azza wa Jal instructed the Malaika to prostrate to him. So this was done once. But here, this verse, it substantiates that Allah is always. So uh, it begins with a nominal sentence, meaning a jubla ismiya. And um, this is indicative that this is a continuous act, meaning Allah is always sending and his angels. Allah and his angels are always sending salat upon the Nabi. You saluna ala Nabi. So, O oh believers, you also, you send salat upon him and salute him with a worthy salutation. So, there is no restriction as to how much we should do that. In fact, when a companion of the Prophet wasallam, he inquired with regards to how much durood he should send upon the Nabi wasallam, and he then um, asked the Prophet humbly and said, Ya Rasulullah, after completing my faraid, shall I spend um, a quarter of my spare time? And the Prophet said, uh, meaning what, whatever you prefer. If you will increase it, it will be better for you. And then he said, um, then shall I do one third of my time? Or then two thirds of my time? And the Prophet continued to say that whatever you wish but if you increase it it will be better for you he didn't say even once that it will be better for me as our darood does not benefit our nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam there is no uh, hadith in which it says that by us reciting darood upon the nabi we benefit the best of creation no in, this is in our interest it is for our betterment it is for our uh, upgrading or for us to increase our uh, units of reward our virtues in the in, uh, in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the namai uh, amal in the record that the angels write in their scrolls for us to increase our reward so it is a way of salvation for us it is a way in which the ummati the follower benefits the prophet does not benefit from our durood yes when allah is showering him with his salat and um, this is how our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam does benefit but when we recite durood this is in our interest we are the ones who benefit so the, then he says that uh, when he continues to ask the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet says that if you will increase it then it will be better for you. Then in the end he says that I will spend all of my time sending durood upon um, the Prophet wasallam. upon which the Prophet replies, he doesn't say this is too much, you are going to engage in a bid'ah or it is haram or uh, this is shirk, you should only be praising Allah and doing the tasbih and the dhikr of Allah. No, he doesn't say that. He says, إِذَنْ يَكْفِي حَمَّكَ وَيُكَفَّرُ لَكَ ذَنْبُكَ Then this will be sufficient for your problems, for your uh, difficulties that you face. And it will serve as an expiation of your sins, meaning that your sins will be forgiven by virtue of you sending drood upon me. So we should take it upon ourselves, respectable viewers and listeners, to... Uh, increase our salawat upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as much as possible and make it your daily practice to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also in the 22nd Jews, uh, we, the Surah al Saba is uh, also present and there is Surah Fatir in Surah Saba. The main theme of this Surah is that it addresses and answers various questions and objections raised by the non-believers uh, on the oneness of God when they question the oneness of God and they also question the, uh, the, the institution of prophethood. We, it also states the story of the prophet Dawood and Suleiman and the bounties and miracles that Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, bestowed to them that Sayyiduna Sulaiman salam, he was able to control the wind 
through his command. This is something, an excellence which Allah gave to him. And Sayyiduna um, Dawood was able to mold metal. As soon as it would come into his blessed hands, he would uh, mold iron, metal, steel into whichever shape he wanted to. So Allah bestowed these miracles to the prophets uh, to demonstrate to those people who were rejecting uh, the message of the oneness of God to show them the disbelievers of that time and the future generations that in these examples there are lessons how the God-fearing people act when they receive blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they do not claim divinity they do not become uh, disobedient or rebe rebellious moreover they become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many verses uh, mention these excellencies that have been given to the prophets that surely we gave to Dawood from us a bounty we said O mountains repeat our praises with him and he was also bestowed a beautiful voice that when he would sing it would be uh, so unique and amazing and the birds as well they would sing and we made a pliable we made the iron hadid soft for him that it would uh, melt in the hands of Sayyiduna Dawud and uh, also with reference to uh, the tribe the tribe Saba has been mentioned لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَعٍ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةٍ That there was for the tribe of Saba in their dwelling place a sign. فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةٍ جَنَّتَانِ أَنْ يَمِينِ وَشِمَالِ There were two gardens on their right and on their left. كُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ رَبِّكُمْ وَشْكُرُوا لَهُ Allah says, eat from the risk of your Rabb وَشْكُرُوا لَهُ And be grateful to him. بَلْدَةٌ طَيِّبَةٌ وَرَبٌ غَفُورٌ a good land you have been provided and a forgiving Lord. <clears throat> but insolently, what did this tribe say? They said, O our Rabb, lengthen the distance between our journeys. Ba'id bayna asfarina wa dhalamu anfusahum and they wronged themselves. So what happened? So we made them narrations, meaning that Allah made them uh, narrations for others to learn from and disperse them in total dispersion and surely in that there are signs for every patient and grateful person we also have surah fatir uh, in the 22nd Jews Surah Fatir is uh, it, 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 uh, it means the originator and the main topic and theme in this uh, surah is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes the angels in the introductory ayats resurrection is also covered and uh, references are made towards the two seas one sweet and one salty and Allah is the one who is the holder of the heavens and the earth they are in his control and you will never find in the way of Allah any change, meaning whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, then there is no change to what he says to his sunnah. The emphasis of this surah is on tawheed, on inviting the people as uh, is the emphasis in almost every surah. This is the central theme of the Quran to invite uh, mankind to accept belief in the oneness of God, which is Tawheed. This is the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending His prophets and to admonish the people in um, those who do not believe in the prophet's message of Tawheed by giving them uh, food for thought just to look around them and witness the signs of the destruction of the previous nations and to realize that uh, when they look around them that it is only God who has created the heavens and the earth and the mountains and everything uh, that is around them that is being preser preserved it is by virtue of Allah Azza wa Jal's creation 
he is the originator who has created this without any previous example and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he uh, describes that in the Quran of Majid that he created you from dust then a nutfa wallahu khalaqakum min turabin thumma min nutfatin then out of a liquid meaning a sperm thumma ja'alakum azwaja then he made for you pairs so this is uh, described in greater detail in the surah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran of Majid may he keep us firm upon the deen of Islam and make us into obedient Muslims Jazakallah khaira for watching until tomorrow's iftar transmission Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allahirrahmanirrahim Shabbat